What's up, y'all? Another day, another theater pick coming your way. As a co-production with the Geffen Playhouse, Steppenwolf presents Noises Off by Michael Frayn and directed by Tony Award-winning ensemble member Anna D. Shapiro. It's about a theater ensemble doing its best to get through I'ma just say it, a disaster of a play. And from lost props to line flubs, I dare you not to laugh. Me personally, I love a good meta comedy. Noise is off run September 12th through October 27th. You can buy tickets starting at just 20 bucks at steppenwolf.org. If you need another show to put on your calendar, I got you. Make sure you catch The Full Monty at Paramount Theater in Aurora from August 21st through October 6th. Winner of nine Tony Awards, the musical is about laid off steel workers trying to survive their economic troubles with a plan that takes them way out of their comfort zone. Get your tickets today at ParamountAurora.com or call the box office at 630 630- 896-6666. But if you buy online, you can get $5 off per ticket, up to four tickets with promo code CityCast, all one word. Again, that's ParamountAurora.com and use the promo code CityCast. Today on CityCast Chicago. TikTok food critic Keith Lee was back in town at the start of August. And if you follow his content, you already know when he pulls up to a city, his reviews can either make or break a restaurant. And sometimes his reviews can reinvigorate a city's food rivalry. During his first visit to Chicago earlier this year, Lee found himself in the middle of the great Chicago chicken wars when he rated Uncle Remus, the West Side staple at the bottom of his short list. Well, late last year, I pulled up on Uncle Remus for the first time to put this rating to the test. It's Wednesday, August 14th. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is What Chicago's Talking About. This right here, this is the new podcast studio. <laughs> My dog. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, because we can't be eating all of this yeah, luxury. I'll, I'll to both of them while you guys this deliciousness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With the saucery, you know, the chickenry and whatnot. We can't we can't be eating on all of this chickenry while you holding the microphone. I can't hold the microphone. No, I can't chicken. eat and hold it at the you same know, the time. The ancestors Harry didn't come north for that. That's the homie Xavier Ramey. He's the CEO of Justice Informed, a social impact consulting firm. But we talking to him today because he's also a lifelong West Sider and an Uncle Remus evangelist. And the podcast studio he referring to, yeah, that's executive producer Simone Alisea's car. We are in the parking lot of Jimmy's <laughs> Crab Shack uh, because Uncle Remus, they make it very clear. Come in, order your food, pay, and leave. You got to stand no in the room only in bulletproof yeah. glass. <laughs> there are no tables. <laughs> there are no chairs. There are no vending machines. Nothing to, for you to hang around with. No. The only thing to comfort you is the story of Uncle Remus. And the food. Clear the food on the walls. Food. You want to introduce yourself for the people real quick? I would love to introduce myself. My name is Xavier Ramey. Uh, do I introduce my professional self or Man, my just, West Sidian what? self? Whichever one you feel comfortable with. It's probably a hybrid I of both here, Yes, I am here representing the power of the west side of Chicago. The family of the Ramies moved up originally the Garners to the Chicagoland area in 1923. We came to the west side because it rhymed with the best side. Up from Louisiana, the Jim Crow South, we've made it ever since. And here we are at Mecca. <laughs> the Meccary of Chicken. Oh, Madison is central. Oh, Madison is central. It, it's very clear why we go to Xavier for Come these conversations. On. Uh Come because on. that type of enthusiasm for the West Side. I'm talking chicken, for baby. For Uncle Remus. <laughs> Uh, it, it's hard to find. Come on, uh, man. On the South Side. I'm going to be real. Six you. pieces fried hard and three fingers twisted up. Let's go, West Side Chicken. <laughs> so, we already did the episode about Harold's, right? After our friend Shakia Taylor Nobody wrote watched that, that fantastic <laughs> article about the history of Harold's and its importance to Black Chicago on the South Side. Obviously, all my West Side friends reached out and said, When you going to Uncle Remus? When, when you going to Uncle Remus? Going to when you going, going to Uncle Remus? Remus? Come on. And, uh, as somebody who has never walked into the Uncle Remus in Austin and ordered until today, come on. Uh, I, it was only fair that I give all my West Side homies um, a, a fair shot. First off, first off, let's not talk about this as a, as a matter of fairness. This is a matter of quality. Mm. This is a matter of expertise. This is a matter of being comprehensive. He's checking my rhetoric. I'm, ch- I'm not checking the rhetoric. I'm checking the logic, my brother, because your <laughs> rhetoric is sophistry. In order of understanding, yes. in order of yes. fullness of research, Xavier <laughs> Ramey, uh, in front of us, we have three orders, yeah. six wings. Fried hard. Fried hard. Come on. 
with mild sauce on it. Come Hot on. sauce on the side. Come on. Fries on the side. Come on. And rolls, which Ooh. I'm not even going to front. Did you just say rolls? Already. Did you? Hold on, player. Did you just say rolls? I'm not because as lie. the chief executive officer of Justice Informed, <laughs> it is important that I inform you of the injustice which which you have just participated. We don't have rolls in Chicago, my G. We have breads. <laughs> breads. Hey, man, that's, it, it, it said rolls on the menu. That's what they mama call them. That's what I'm going to call them. We got rolls on our bodies, but we got breads <laughs> under our chickens. We're going to come back to the sort of component chicken. Do you remember, what's your earliest memory of eating Uncle Remus? Oh, man, dude. Um... So here's the thing. Out West, there's a lot of different restaurants. Now, that said, Uncle Remus, I believe, has a place in history for a reason. One, because, uh, and this is why I remember it when I first had it. Mm -hmm. And this was, I mean, this had to be, oh, this had to be like early 90s. Okay. Um, the sauce got a little sweet to it. It's got a little sweet to it. It's like Chicago barbecue mm -hmm. versus that Texas. You know what I'm saying? No, when when we talk about the sugar quotient yeah. versus the vinegar quotient. I feel like that's what a true rivalry really is, is the sauce. Yeah, Harold's, Harold's got a saltiness to it that I do appreciate. Let mm -hmm. me not disparage or derel make derelict the deliciousness of these delicacies. <laughs> but 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 it's the sweetness that I came west for. Okay. You know, this is how the west was settled, my G. It was the chickens. <laughs> it and, was the chicken. And so your earliest memory is just the sweetness of Yeah, early 90s, of that man. Sauce. I remember you, 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 but not only that, mm -hmm. the batter is very important. Okay. You know, some people use regular flour. Some folks use the cornstarch. Some people like to marinate the chickens. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. Some people do the flash fry. They don't be hard enough. You know, in, in Chicago, you got to, you got to have it fried hard. You got to <laughs> keep it in that oil a little long, <laughs> you know? Make sure it's cooked. <laughs> so you can get all of the deliciousness in it. And that's what a lot, the oil has a viscosity just like the sauce does. See, Harold's is a little thin on the sauce. Uncle Remus, man, you're going to have it underneath your fingernails. Mm. This thing right here, they're going to know you had it when you come to school tomorrow. They're going to be <laughs> roasting you and toasting you, brother. They're going to know you had some Uncle Remus. Nobody knew you went to Harold's last night. <laughs> Everybody know you was at Remus's. <laughs> So maybe you out here trying to live a greener life. Maybe you want to reduce the amount of food waste heading to Chicago's landfills and you're thinking about composting. If so, you got to try Waste Not. Here's how it works. Waste Not gives you a five gallon bucket with an airtight lid. That's where you're going to toss your food scraps, cooked or raw, paper products like napkins and coffee filters and anything else that's certified compostable. Then the Waste Not team comes and collects your full bucket in electric service vehicles, might I add, and they leave you a clean, empty one. This happens every week or every other week, depending on your needs. Plus, for my gardeners out there, y'all gonna be able to get back some of the finished compost you helped create without ever having to deal with all the gross parts of the process. So give Waste Not a try and check out wastenotcompost.com. CityCast Chicago listeners can test the service with a free month by using promo code CityCast Compost. So you talk about those components, what we're comparing on. So we talk seasoning. We're talking seasoning. Batter, we talk slash crunch. So, so the crunch and crispiness. Can mm -hmm. the crispiness withstand the sauciness? That is one of the central mm -hmm. questions of a quality chicken. Now, this chicken has been sitting in this bag, it has, which means that it's going to be long. above salt. Five or so minutes. There will not be a battery to the quality. On that note, I think, we should, I, think we should, I think we should crack it open. <laughs> let's crack it open. Bags. Let's crack it open. Let's get it open. Let's get it. Let's get it. Y'all hear the sounds of this heaven? Y'all hear the sounds of heaven right now? Come on, six pieces. First time he knew to this. <laughs> yeah, that sauce super sweet. That sauce. I like sweet, my man. sauce a little. I like I my know, sauce a little I salty. Know. I heard you was real saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your fingers. See, that's how I know you like it, boy. That sauce a little darker, boy. Darker the very sweeter the juice. <laughs> that was gonna say it. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. You already got some bones. Boy, I thought you was playing dominoes in that chicken bucket, boy. You got so many bones in that yard. <laughs> All right, so when I first popped it open, I dipped my finger in the sauce a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Very sweet. I had to even give a little cough out. Come on now. And you know, I got a sweet yeah, tooth. Yeah, you're new to this. But the marriage between this chicken oh, come on. and this come on. sweetness, come on. because I get it now. When come you on. say mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the saltiness mm -hmm. of the mild sauce of Harold's with the mm -hmm. saltiness of the chicken, mm -hmm. they go together, but I get it. It's a lot. But the sweetness and the salt here, there's a balance here. 
mm. that um, I can appreciate. It, I'm not going to rank it higher or nothing, but I can appreciate it. So we clearly talked about just how important Uncle Remus is to you. Just how yeah. significant of a staple is this for the West Side? Because like, like I was saying yeah. earlier, it's not all comparison, but like, no, it's not. you know, if we're talking about who's winning the sort of Chicago clout war, uh, you know, Harold says. Why are you smiling? Been, why are you saying that? Why are you I mean, smiling? Can, why are you saying it? Though? I'm not I mean, trying to. I'm just getting my energy you, back. You seem like my, you were just about to I'm talk about community up. being the point, but you smiling talking about competition. So I'm just trying to understand your motives, my G. So just how significant is this Uncle location Remus. Okay. at Uncle Remus? Yeah. To the so there's, there's a, a couple different ways to split that, my G. A couple different ways to split that, much like your logic. Um, on one side is the question of real estate, right? Who has the money? Some people say, man. Uncle Remus is is not as important as Harold's because Harold has more locations. Well, I would say, well, Harold probably had a scale strategy. Um, when Gus and his wife first started Uncle Remus, when they came on up here, okay, I'm talking 1943, okay, Gus came up here, couldn't get a job. He came up like a lot of black folks from the Souths, okay? Couldn't get a job. He, he started cooking, okay? But when he came up here, See, this is, I'm bringing up the story of Gus and his wife because um, the story of resistance and resilience is what's important to us. Um, not the question of how many restaurants you got opened mm -hmm. up or whether the one on 87th is better than the one on 35th. And Uncle Remus is the story of black Chicago. Uncle Remus is the story of bringing old traditions of cooking, not just scaling businesses. Of course, it's a, it's a good business. It's a, still a family-owned business. I want to just add that as well. Um, that adds to the, 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 uh, the reputational mm -hmm. dignity um, of this incredible establishment uh, that heralds, which is a franchise um, uh, that any, any old Tom, Dick, and Harry can open up uh, outside of the family. Um, uh, uh, Remus is solidly on the west side. So look at that consistency. That's what no, I'm you on 47th. You on 47th? I'm on 47th doing what? Uncle Remus on 47th, College Grove. <sighs> you know, sometimes we got to understand what it means to build bridges See? across the city. <laughs> sometimes we got to understand hey. what it means to be a neighbor <laughs> to our neighbor. You know, we were talking about rivalries a yeah. couple of weeks ago, and obviously, Harold, Uncle Remus come up, but that becomes in some ways a example of a, a, a slight rivalry between and, black Chicago on the yeah. South side and the West side. And this goes all the way back to the great migration. So we don't have to yeah. go through the history, but you know, what, what do you think this rivalry says about that tension between, you know, where I grew up and where you grew up? I actually think that um, the Harold's and uncle Remus rivalry um, brings a lightness to some of the realities of how some people truly do feel there is a rival between the South and West Side black communities of Chicago. I think that the fact that we can still sit down and laugh about chicken, laugh about consistencies of batter, laugh about sweet versus tangy sauces, I think that that actually brings a lightness um, to the larger macroscopic point of is there a rivalry between the South and the West Side? The South Side, West Side contentiousness, um, some of it, it for some people is very real, mm -hmm. right? Like as somebody who does a lot of work in social justice and public planning and all this kind of stuff, I know and I do believe as a as a as a, a third generation Chicago and whose family been here for a hundred years and we got five generations in the city. Um, I I definitely feel that. Um, the South Side has more of the focus of the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has a larger landmass. It has more anchor institutions. It has places like the University of Chicago, whereas we have places like Malcolm X, both quality institutions, but way different scale. Mm -hmm. um, they have more museums. They have um, more highway infrastructure, more bus routes, um, more urban density as it relates to residential neighborhoods. They have more bustling uh, commercial districts, more 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 commercial corridors. You know, if you go and say, hey, in the in, on the Black West Side, what's What's the what are three main commercial corridors? I mean, we're going to talk about what Madison used to be. Right. We're going to talk about what 16th Street was before Dr. King was was assassinated. But if you go south, we can still talk about what 63rd is. We can still talk about what 79th is. We can still talk about 87th Street. We can still talk about King Drive. We can still talk like we can still we have we can rattle these things off in 2023. Um, and that's why I always say the West Side for me as a longtime resident, it really feels like um, the the home of 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 the ghost. It's the ghost town of bad public policy. 
Um, you know, it's a place that, um, you know, for many black legends and black families, it was the, the starting ground for their legacy in the city. And because of divestment and because of, 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 of a lack of equity in how we plan the city, um, particularly starting with, with Mayor Daley when he came in and created this downtown focus rather than a neighborhood focus, it really ushered in the downtown and the skyline we see today. But what do we have on the other side of that? We have, you know, torn down Henry Horner projects where my dad used to be an organizer. Um, and I think that sometimes the tension that may exist between the South Siders and the West Siders is the effect of a feeling of being forgotten or being intentionally left out. And where there are longer term, like there are families on the South Side that have way more money. There's more money on the South Side. Mm -hmm. and, and when you don't have that, that, that it can sometimes turn into your seat at the table downtown on the fifth floor. And, and, and I know that there's a lot of people who think that keeping this mantra of West Side versus South Side actually makes this worse. And I do think that there's some merit to that um, uh, where we get competitive. Um, but I also know that it's really important to have this to be able to joke over. Yeah. Because most of us don't take it seriously. Most of us don't. Yeah. And I think that the people coming into Chicago, we we haze them a little bit. Which side you with? You know, mm -hmm. we haze them a little bit. And maybe they they might take it too seriously. Yeah. Um, but for us long timers, nah, we're not taking this too seriously. We're hoping that we we one family, one Chicago. Um, you know, and, and if we can settle that score over some some saucy uh sweet chicken versus mm -hmm. some saucy tangy <laughs> chicken, then man, all the better. Hey, that is the goal, my hope, and all of the conversations we have about food on this podcast. I want to explore not only the history, what can that teach us about segregation in our city, but how can it be a bridge uh, to build conversations, to yeah. uh, inspire relationships, and and to always sneak in some some information, even then next to the roasting sessions, next to the <laughs> jokes. Uh, it's really a frying session, given we got this chicken in here. <laughs> uh, all right, before I let you go, I got to give my my humble opinion. Uh, Come on now. <clears throat> honestly, I think they are way closer uh, than I expected. Oh, I, I didn't oh you came in a doubter. I didn't. Ex I, I didn't. I'm not going to lie. I leaned into the narrative a little bit. Of Harold's. Uh, of the Harold's yeah. v. Uncle Remus, yeah. right? I don't lean into the South versus West side um, or sort of give that energy, but I do. Uh, I was somebody who didn't need to... to uh. Uh, understand mm. Uncle Mitch, right? I had enough with sharks and with JJ's and, and, and with the staple there's heroes. The but now that I've I've opened up my my eyes and my palate, um, I mean it quickly jumps up the list for me in terms yeah. of Chicago's best chicken. In terms of sauce comparison for, com for comparison, I got cousins on this side, yeah, bro. It, what you gonna say in this it, car in this parking I'm lot? I'm just gonna say <laughs> it, it might it might be a one A one B situation there. A one A one B. A one A one B situation. Look, I'm gonna say I would eat personally. Bruh. I would eat Bruh. Harold's mild sauce on things that are not Harold's chicken. Okay, you ain't gonna but, eat this but, on some barbecue. But I do think Uncle Remus's sauce and its chicken work better together. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, if I'm taking a jug away, I'm still gonna take the Harold's jug. Mm -hmm. But the Uncle Remus chicken sauce combination. I, 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 it, the balance is better. So you got to talk about the chicken. What makes yeah. the chicken so good then? Nah, the chicken is crispy. It was sitting there for about 12 to 15 right. minutes before we got it. And it was still crispy. And it was still crispy. I'm talking, uh, I'm talking healthy baby proportions, powder right? line and crispy. They, 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 wasn't giving, uh, they wasn't giving you, uh, you know, skimpy wings there. Mm -mm. Right? No, but they also were not wings. bloated GMO wings yeah. either, man. I'd be not, scared of them wings. Uh, shout out to my boy Xavier Ramey for pulling up on us at Uncle Remus over here off Madison and Central. Yes. Uh, I, I, I am no longer a doubter. I am a believer. I Woo! understand the hype behind Uncle Remus. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm definitely going to be getting it more often with more intention moving forward. Yes, I want to thank you, my brother, for uh, having me on here to make sure that the gospel of Remus <laughs> is a book that you have read. Um, know that it must be scripture written upon your heart. You must walk with it as wisdom daily. You must they understand. Turn us off, man. <laughs> Before we let you go, make sure you're tapped into all CityCast Chicago has to offer by bookmarking our website, chicago.citycast.fm. There you're going to find our latest articles, our neighborhood guides, our event calendar, and you can subscribe to our daily newsletter, Hey Chicago. Of course, I can't let you go without some good news. Our friends over at Slow Mo are celebrating 13 years of queer connection and joy this Saturday at Sleeping Village in Avondale for their anniversary bash. I got the link for you in the show notes. 
As always, we appreciate you for listening and reading. We're going to be back bright and early tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. Peace. Every time I talk to you, my job feels <laughs> threatened. I'm like, this mom, Wait, if they would have interviewed him first, all of these phrases, all of these jingles, the top of the head. It, this is why you got to invest in the arts. See, I grew up in slam poetry, my G. I grew up doing doing ciphers in the halls of red, uh, the, 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 the red part of Whitney Young High School.